But you're here because God willed it. Yes. And he purposed it to be so. Yes. And we are so glad that he did. First Samuel chapter 10 this morning. Beginning at verse number 17. And I want you to once again stand as we read the word of God. We're going to read, I'm going to read verses 17 through 21 solo. And then I want you to join in with me with the reading of verse number 22. First Samuel chapter 10, beginning at verse number 17, the word of God says, And Samuel called to the people to, together unto the Lord at Mizpah, and said unto the children of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought up Israel out of Egypt, and delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and of the hand of all kingdoms, and of them that oppressed you. And ye have this day rejected your God, who himself saved you out of all your adversities and your tribulations. And ye have said unto him, Nay, but set a king over us. Now therefore present yourselves before the Lord by your tribes and by your thousands. And when Samuel had caused all the tribes of Israel to come near, the tribe of Benjamin was taken. When he had caused the tribe of Benjamin to come near by their families, the family of Matri was taken and Saul, the son of Kish, was taken. And when they saw him, he could not be found together with me. Therefore, they inquired of the Lord further if the man should yet come thither. And the Lord answered, Behold, he hath hid himself among the stuff. You may be seated. This morning we're going to talk from the subject hiding amongst the stuff. <laughs> I got time for this. Hiding amongst the stuff. Sometimes in an effort to show us what we really need, there are occasions when God will give us what we want. Such was the case with the children of Israel here in the book of 1 Samuel. For we see them in chapter 8, verse 5, asking Samuel to make them a king like all of the other nations. God had been reigning as king over them ever since they left Egypt. God had brought them through danger seen and unseen. And God had led them through victory after victory over nation beyond nations and had brought them to the point where they were now as a mighty nation of Israel. And regardless of what God had done, they showed him just how ungrateful they are for all that God has done by asking for a king like all the other nations. Well, God gives them what they ask for. Sometimes God will do that. He'll, he'll give you what you ask for. And he gives them a king in the person of a man named Saul. But now there's only one problem with Saul. And that is Saul doesn't want to be king. Here in our text we see Samuel gathering all of the tribes of Israel before the presence of the Lord in Mizpah. What's going to happen here is that the Lord is going to choose the one who he is going to allow to be Israel's first king. So as Samuel gathers all the tribes together there at Mizpah, uh, the tribe of Benjamin is taken. The lot falls upon Benjamin. As they take Benjamin, they gather all of Benjamin together. And here are all the families of Benjamin standing before the Lord and Samuel to see out of what family in Benjamin is the king going to come? Right. Well, the Bible says the lot fell upon the tribe, or for the family rather, of Matrach. 
and out of the family of Matri, whose particular son was it? Well, it was Kish, son Saul, that was taken from the family of Matri. Then the Bible says that as they were looking for Saul, God had chosen Saul, but they couldn't find Saul. God had allotted Saul, but Saul was nowhere to be found, and so they kept inquiring of the Lord, is the man going to come? Is the one that you've chosen going to come? And God said, I know where he is. He's hiding amongst the stuff. So why was Saul hiding amongst the stuff? Why was Saul not where he should have been so that he could be presented before the people as king? Well, obviously because Saul didn't want to be king. Saul, my brothers and sisters, did not want to be king because he didn't see himself as king material. When Samuel initially approached Saul in chapter 9 and verse number 20, he informed him that all of the desire of Israel was upon him and his father's house. Saul's response to him was that can't be the case because I'm too insignificant. We find here in chapter 9 and verse number 21 that Saul answered Samuel and said, Am not I a Benjamite? Of the smallest tribes of Israel, uh, Saul's perception of himself was that he was too insignificant. He says, I'm from the smallest family in the smallest tribe. There's no way God could have determined that me from the smallest tribe in the smallest family of the smallest tribe can be fit to be king. Saul was in these words revealing unto Samuel how he saw himself. He saw himself as insignificant because of his family background. He saw himself as inferior. He saw himself as less than able to handle the position of being king. Therefore, when it came time.